Uh, Tom, Tom, I've had some, I've had some marvelous news actually. Is it um, wrestling news? Nearly. We'll get to oh. that in just two seconds. But I need okay. to break the news that if everything's socially all right in in the world and stuff by September, that American Rachel could be playing another gig. The comeback. The oh comeback my song. god! I know. So I've been spending all morning just doing like my ha 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 ha. I'm just warming, just warming up my voice for the months ahead. Oh the my comeback word. of the century. That's a. Ma- I want a, I want a Netflix documentary about the return. <laughs> I want, I, I, and, and I want front row seats, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to be. Oh, cannot um, wait. Mate. But I mean, you know, more, more pertinently for this channel, I believe you've got another type of news. No, I want to talk about American Rachel <laughs> instead. Sod the wrestling news. Now yeah. we we can't sadly sod the wrestling news. Future plans for Drew McIntyre have been revealed. Kenny Omega is set to challenge for the Impact World Championship. We'll get to that in a second. And find out which WWE personality has made a secret backstage return. It's not a secret anymore. We'll tell you soon. The story of Iron Drew in WWE is an interesting one. Just two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago we had Elimination Chamber? Or was it three now? It was two, uh, wasn't it? Around time, that. I think time it was two, is a, yeah, two. Time is merely a construct of human perception, so I just don't know. No. Um, but he is no longer WWE champion, losing that belt to The Miz. We have had an idea via Dave Meltzer and Wrestling Observer Live of how the road to WrestleMania is going to shape for Drew. What's the story, Jack? It's kind of much as a lot of people expected by the sounds of it. They're positioning Drew right now to go into a title match with Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania because they want, according to Meltzer, this is, is this is, excuse me, anyway, um, they want him to be the challenger in front of a crowd. And I think, you know, there is, a, there is a certain logic to that. I think that, you know, Drew was kind of robbed of a chance to win the belt in front of a big crowd. And hopefully he can get that again if this is indeed the plan. I like the idea of, of them doing that. I think they want to get that big championship victory pop that Drew was so sorely denied last year at WrestleMania. Like his big crowning moment in front of approximately zero people live and lots of people crying online. We could really do with that big moment in front of people. But obviously, it's a, it's the, the Miz being in, a, in the mix for this one is kind of ideal. Dave goes on to say uh, they could have gone with someone else as transitional champion. But the thing is, when you're a one-week champion, according to Dave, it kind of makes you suck. So you might as well do do someone who you don't portray as a main event guy. And Miz is somebody that can win and lose the WWE title in that order. And I don't think lose any positioning, really. No, yeah, I agree. And also, I think even though he did only hold it for a week and it doesn't make him look the strongest or anything, um, it was kind of a nice reward for him. I don't know how much title reigns actually mean to wrestlers. I suppose it differs from person to person. But I think it was a whether intentional or not from WWE, I think it was quite a nice symbolic way of saying you've been really consistent for a, a decade and a half and, and mm. here's another title reign. I, I just thought it was quite nice. Um, obviously, he's not the champion anymore. It's, it's Big Bob. And apparently that's not all that Drew's got in store. So it's not as if he's just going to get hot shotted straight into a program with Bobby Lashley. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that uh, Brian Alvarez reckons that it's going to be Drew versus Sheamus uh, at fast lane as well, possibly in a last man standing match off the back of their draw on Raw this week. Now I'm up for that. I I, I didn't grade uh, the Drew Sheamus match particularly high. I didn't think it was the best they can do, but that's fine because we have ourselves a match at a finish from Raw that leads to this. I genuinely think with the training wheels off, Drew and Sheamus can can tear strips off each other and have a highly entertaining match at Fastlane. So I'm all up for that. Sheamus mm. was one of those guys that was in the consideration for maybe they hot shot the belt to Sheamus in some way, then have him lose. Uh, but I, I, I'm kind of glad they kept him away from that. I feel like this, the Miz is, is a more ideal candidate for that one. So Drew McIntyre's road to WrestleMania looking rather interesting. Meanwhile, in AEW, that forbidden door is swinging off its hinges back and forth. We had some uh, big AEW-related news coming out of Impact last night, didn't we, Jack? Yeah, it's swinging in multiple directions. The door's kind of a portal to various different worlds, not just Japan, but also... I keep forgetting where Impact's based. Is it Orlando? Is it it's Canada? Nashville these Nashville days. Nashville now. Nashville, that's the one. Um, I was just getting there chronologically. Or Smackville. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. As, as some people may remember it. 
Now, we've just had Revolution from AEW, and I always get it confused with Impact Rebellion, quite similar sort of names there. Uh, and it's even more confusing for me because, uh, well, it was it was revealed last night that there's going to be a title versus title match in the main event of Rebellion, pitting the Impact Champion against the AEW World Champion, which I, I'm 99% certain is going to be Kenny Omega at the time. But we're not quite certain yet who the Impact Champion's going to be. I think I'm, I'm correct in saying that. Well, we get that decided on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Rich Swan and the TNA World Champion, Moose, putting uh, it all on the line. They're unifying the belts. This is the end of the road for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, which is a bit sad. It is a little bit sad. Um, I, I don't know who's going to win that match, really. I, I think that Rich Swan's probably the more natural like match up with Kenny Omega but I a part of me right despite Rich Swan and Kenny having a bit of history recently I I kind of want to see Kenny go against a bigger dude I think that would be quite interesting yeah I, I just I I agree and I think Moose is somebody that Impact are really proud of within their roster he's somebody that is uh, featured very prominently week to week I, I'm kind of sad that the, the, the timing of this is interesting because I would I'd like to see more Rich Swan and Moose matches and right. I hope that we do get to see them off the back of all this. I can see, I can see Rich Swan beating Moose on Saturday. I can see uh, a great match between Swan and Omega, Met, possibly even get, Moose getting amongst it, getting involved, costing Rich Swan the match, and leading to a few more programs between Moose and Swan down the road. Uh, mm. But this is a big moment for. Um, which, oh, hang on, maybe, hang on, me saying Swan costing him, that would surely make Kenny Omega the Impact World Champion. Would they well, do that? Yeah, I think they would. I think they would do that. Um, oh. I think that's certainly more likely than Kenny losing the AW World Championship. Mm. Unless they do some kind of, you know, unsatisfying DQ kind of finish, which they, they might do. That's traditionally what happens in title versus title matches throughout wrestling history. But I think in this case, we could be looking at Kenny winning the Impact World Championship. And then he'd have three major titles from three different promotions. Obviously, he would he would have the Impact Championship were he to win, the AW World Championship, of course, and the AAA Mega Championship as well from Mexico. So he, he seems to be on a mission to collect those belts. He's going to have a nightmare getting through customs. <laughs> uh, these, the Forbidden Door uh, giving us uh, a very tantalising uh, few weeks of programme between AEW and Impact Wrestling. The Forbidden Door swung out of Stamford recently. Christian Cage turning up uh, in AEW, signing on the dotted line with the company. He was chatting to Renee Young on her podcast, The Oral Sessions, about his uh, reason to join uh, AEW. And it's a decision that was made pretty quickly by the sounds of things. Yeah, it sounds like he wasn't certain which way he was going to go. And then a decision was reached, as you say, very quickly. So he walked through what happened with Renee uh, and said, on Wednesday, March 3rd, there was nothing signed. It was a shock to me when I heard Paul White, the big show, signed. Uh, Tony Khan and I hit it off pretty quickly and we felt comfortable enough that we were going to work together. But I wasn't sure I was going to go. And all the talks I'd had with WWE were very cordial. Then John Moxley talked to me and made me think, I'm doing myself a disservice if I don't at least explore my options. Then I had a conversation with Tony and it escalated very quickly. And within a week, it was a done deal. Just like that. I, just, I find it amazing to think that at the, the start of this month, like there was no plans for Christian to do anything other than maybe pop up in WWE every now and then. I know that Kofi Kingston had put out a tweet saying that they were they were very in the early stages of doing something to see the New Day versus Edge and Christian down the road. Oh. Uh, and Kofi has, has hinted said Edge is off to WrestleMania and Christian, well, you know, <laughs> response to that. Um, but so they, obviously it seemed like the start of this month, which was only 10 days ago, that, mm. that Christian was going to be part of WWE for a good long while. And uh, uh, off he goes, moves, and he moves on. He leaves with no bad, bad will towards WWE. He seems like he's in a good form, but he wants to kind of go out on a, on a high note. He goes on to say that it was a tough call leaving WWE, saying anytime there is a life-altering decision, there's a lot of thought. I have a lot of time to think about this, but what I really needed was the best platform for me. I've got a second lease on life here, uh, but I also want to help. Where can I help the next generation? And that's what I felt at AEW. There was something intriguing about being able to be hands-on with everything and having that challenge. It felt like the right situation. There's nothing wrong with WWE and how they do things. That's the thing that I've heard quite a bit about about guys going over to AEW, some of the former WWE guys and such, is that not only is it a chance for them to showcase stuff that they probably wouldn't be allowed to do within WWE, but also a chance to, to help new people along. 
Yeah, I wonder. I wonder who he's going to start. Who his first few programs are going to be with? Because we've seen the likes of Sting get matched up with Darby Allen, for example, which was quite a natural one. Um, and we've seen, you know, Vicky Guerrero is in a managerial role with Nyla Rose at the minute. Everybody, all the veterans, seem to kind of gravitate towards certain parts of the roster. And I just can't work out where Christian's going to land. Really, I, I don't know. Could he be? Could he be TNT champion in the future? Because he's a big name. Maybe you get more eyes on the product. There's various different possibilities, and I don't know where it's going to go. But that's that's part of the fun, isn't it? That is part of the fun, indeed. I'm in- I intrigued fun. to see. I love. Hey, do you know what? We all like fun. We do to like quote, fun. To quote Andrew WK from his album <laughs> "I Get Wet," was we want. <laughs> Was it from that album, We Want Fun? I'm going to have to I, check now. I don't know. I only know Party Hard. I'm a plastic Andrew WK fan. Oh, mate. It's, it's from, I get, I, okay, so it's from the Jackass soundtrack. I thought it was from uh, his album, uh, I Get Wet, which is his uh, seminal work. You're right. Uh, Andrew WK's I Get Wet is the greatest album, right? It's because his Macbeth. It, it's his, it's, it's his it, Hamlet. It's his magnum opus. It is, yeah. it is his, his, it's his John Lennon Imagine. It's, um... It's because every song sounds like Party Hard. <laughs> he right. hit he hit his okay. stride with Party Hard. He did not veer from the path. The entire album is a tribute to Party Hard. That's and fair enough. I wrote a blog years ago about why I think it's the greatest album that ever existed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, the Very blog good. doesn't exist anymore, but my opinion on it stays the same. That is the that is the power of Andrew WK. Let's finish on people power. Shall we, Jack? Oh, yes, of course. So this comes from the Wrestling Observer. I can't remember if I put it in my notes for you, Jack. So I It's will... all right. I found the link. It's okay. You've got it. Excellent. Got it. So, Jack, what's this about, uh, about John Laurinaitis in the news today? Well, this is according to Dave Meltzer writing on the, uh, the Figure 4 online website. And he basically has said that John Laurinaitis has been put back in the position of head of talent relations, reporting to the WWE Executive Vice President of Operations, Brad, Brad Bloom. But essentially, Johnny Ace has got his old job back. Not his, not his kayfabe job, not the GM stuff, his real one, his talent relations job, which, uh, which is kind of out of nowhere for me, really. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously very liked with the company. I think last time we saw him was during the Money in the Bank match. He was in that mm. in in that electric wheelchair, going people power in the canteen area, yeah. and then we, and then he disappeared. But he's back on the back on the company books now. He's very much he's very liked within within WWE, isn't he? Which is probably why he's back here. I guess so. It's it's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? Because it seemed for a while like WWE were gonna maybe progress in a bit more of a radical new direction. I'm thinking primarily about Paul Heyman being put in a more creative role, which he was for a short time, along with Eric Bischoff, who didn't last very long. And then and then Heyman, of course, reportedly got taken out of that creative role as well. Now he's just kind of focused on his stuff with Roman Reigns. And now Bruce Pritchard's back in, and now John Laurinaitis is back in. The band's back together. I don't understand why. But I mean, I'm not going to begrudge anybody you know, getting a job and getting their job back and, and being happy with that. I'm not, I'm not, I've got no ill will towards John Laurinaitis, but it just seems from the outside, like a little bit of a step backwards. You thought they might have used this as an opportunity to change things up a little bit? Maybe. It seemed like they were going to go in that direction a year or two ago, but now it, it's all kind of fallen by the wayside. WWE seem to have this, this formula of, of people that they have around them during uh, th- throughout the throughout the decades and i feel like when things get a little bit tough they kind of go back to that standard formula mm. there's a there's a reluctance on a lot of occasions to really branch out and try something a bit new it's the whole thing of if the ratings are down quick get vince mcmahon on tv immediately to feud with somebody like they did that for many years to the point where vince mcmahon really isn't in a position to do that anymore but backstage having people that uh, vince very much trusts like you bruce Pritchard, like you john laurinaitis is is pretty part and parcel but like you say the band back together mcmahon laurinaitis and pritchard and american rachel as well and, and, Amer- and you know what that's a beautiful way to bookend this you know the mm. the band like american rachel back together and hopefully gracing us with their presence by september <laughs> I, t- I hope so tom i very much hope so crossing all things if you need airplay on the radio mate let me know well i just thank Slide you very much. I, I just, i've got to just quickly point out that i mentioned the band to you primarily quite a lot on this channel and yet whenever anybody asks me well some people are like well where can we find your music then and i'm like well we haven't got any so i mentioned them for no reason Aww. but it seems like a bit of a fruitless endeavor to mention them on this channel but i couldn't help myself would you like an interview to advertise the return on bbc radio sunderland because i can <laughs> i can swing that for you yeah 
that would be absolutely superb. But I'll get confirmation first in the in in the summer probably that it's definitely going ahead. We'll have to see how everything goes. Nice one. Stay safe until then. Love you, Rachel. <laughs>